Hello everybody, my name is SSDS and today I will bring you the long-awaited 8.3 Survival Hunter Guide. In this guide, I will be going over what the best races are for Survival Hunter in PvP, the standard uh, talent build you'll be using, the PvP talents you should be using, and which situations you use them in, uh, the best traits, uh, your stat priority, enchants, and then Azerite pieces and trinkets you should be looking out for to use uh, to use in Arena. I'll go over the rotation, how to min-max your damage to the highest, and then I'll be giving you guys some good macros. Uh, I think they're very useful for Hunter, your guys' best 2v2 and 3v3 comps, and then a little tips and tricks about a couple things that uh, you can do to improve your gameplay in Arena. Uh, in this guide, I will not be, I will not, I will assume you know the basics of Survivor. I won't be going over what each exact talent does. I'm just going to assume you guys know. If you guys have any questions down below for about basics, I'm more than happy to uh, help to answer. But to cut this guide down in length, I will assume you know what each talent, honor talent, what your abilities do. So. First off, let's start off with the races. We're going to do uh, Alliance first, where there's going to be four races. I'm going to list them in order. So the best race, in my opinion, for Alliance is the Human. Uh, the reason why I think the Human is the best race is because of this little nifty ratio right here. Every man for himself, three minute cooldown, reduces, just removes all stun effects, but it does put your Liar's Medallion on a 90 second cooldown. But the reason why we don't care that it puts it on 90 second cooldown is what human lets us do is it lets us take Relentless to 20% reduced crowd control. So it's like playing a pseudo orc, but it works on everything. So it's very powerful. Definitely really strong. And also as a little extra thing, we get the human spirit 2% increased secondary stat gain. So say you get 100 haste from a piece of gear, you get 102 haste. Get 100, uh, 100 crit, 102 crit. So it's just very useful. It's one of the best PvE racials. And so it's just also going to be good in PvP as well. Uh, then now the second best race is going to be Night Elf. Why is Night Elf the second best in my opinion? Shadow Melt it is very strong. You can use it to immune certain abilities like G Pines in the middle of the air, Case Bolts in the middle of the air, middle of the air Storm Bolts. Just kind of just negate any range of damage, make it essentially immune. It's very strong. Just Good against double caster, but it leaves you more susceptible because you have to play Gladiator's Medallion into like Rogue Mage, so you don't have a reduced stun du reduction on the goes. And if you want to take the reduced stun reduction, but then you don't have a trinket, and trinketing as a hunter for your defensive cooldowns is humongous. It's just it's necessary. Can't really get around it. Uh, the third best rational is Dwarf slash Night Iron Dwarf. I think Dwarf is more powerful uh because the racial is more defensive but dark iron dwarf can be substituted out i'll go over each what each racial does uh dwarf has stone form which removes all essential dot effects uh, magic curse disease bleeds all that and gives you 10 percent damage reduction as to where dark iron dwarfs have fire blood which uh removes all those but then gives you 600 base main stat and then for every single debuff you removed it gives you an extra 100 main stat so you can get a good amount you can get a good amount of extra main stat but the defensive uh bonus of stone farm in my mind puts it above uh dark iron but dark iron it works just as well it's mainly there to remove maledicts which i also don't think hunter have a huge time dealing with since you have survival tactics but if you're running into a team that has three maledicts you can survival tactics one off you can stone form the th second one off and then the third one your healer should be able to spell by then so that's good and then the last racial I'll, uh, mention this one is a little bit below all of them by a decent amount but it's still worth mentioning is the Draenei racial they have gift of the naru three minute cooldown heal for 20 percent of your health on your target for f over five seconds so it's four percent every second it's decently it's decent it's not going to save anybody like during cooldowns like say you're getting combust vendetta it's not going to save you or save your uh, friend but if it's just a random go in the middle of the game they just get a hodge cheat they just get a hodge kidney sheep um just gift an arrow maybe they can you can somehow extend the game long enough for people to get cooldowns off but nothing too insane so i wouldn't really i definitely is uh i wouldn't pick it over the other three i just uh previously mentioned but if you want to play drowning because you like how it looks just know it's it's not the worst thing in the world next we're gonna go over the horde races 
And as one of you might know, if you're into Arena, there's only one Horde race to play, and that is Orc. Because of the hardiness facial uh, stuns are reduced by 20%. So it's like playing Relentless on stuns, and then you also get the Gliar's Medallion. So Orc is better into Rogue Mage, just where humans have been into everything else. But, yep, human and Orc hold in hand side by side. The number one races are both because they essentially have the same exact racial. Humans just work on a little bit more, and Orc's cooldown is just a little shorter. Next, we're going to be going over the standard talent build. So, in the first tier, your options are between Viper's Venom and Alpha Predator. Terms of engagement, completely worthless. We're not going to ever look at it in any situation ever. It's really bad. It's, it's just a big meme. Wouldn't, wouldn't ever consider it. So, Viper's Venom and Alpha Predator. It's really preference. Um, I prefer Alpha Predator because it's more fluent, uh, more on-demand fluent, uh, Focus regeneration, as where uh, Viper's Venom is more of like, it stops you from using focus on one ability every so often. So, they're both good. Uh, Viper's Venom also provides a little bit more burst than a go if you get a proc, because it makes Serpent Sink hit from like 3 to 4k to hit to 11k, and if it crits at 19k, it's like, it's a decent extra hit. Um, not insane. I will say, though, at lower haste levels, like sub-24% haste or so, uh, Viper's Venom is easier to play with because um, it's less global intensive as compared to Alpha Predator with the two kill commands. So, we got that going for us. The next tier, uh, pretty much the only talent you'll ever take is Grill Tactics. Uh, just the two bombs making the bombs do extra damage. It's really nice. How you just play, if you're playing a weird cleave comp, if you're playing like Peach DK or something, or like Frost, like Unholy of Frost PhD, and you want to just cleave as hard as you can, maybe Hydra Bite's good, but Grill Tactics, it's always a safe bet, always going to be really good. Uh, so next talent here uh, has a little bit more discussion to it, because every single talent has their own merit in certain situations. Uh, I'm going to go over the easiest to discuss, which is just Camouflage. Uh, pretty much you just gain stealth for a minute and you heal in it. It's a, This is really good. Uh, I take this talent every time I'm playing double DPS 2s. It's um, very strong. And if I'm playing with a rogue or feral on 3s, I'll take this talent. Uh, rogue, every time I'll take it. Camouflage, probably 60-70% of the games I'll take camo. And next is Natural Mending. If you're ever playing with a healer in 2s, or if you're not playing rogue or, or rogue or feral, you're pretty much always taking Natural Mending. And then into certain comps, like into Demon Hunters and 3s, I'll always take Natural Mending because you won't really get a camo off against Demon Hunters. So pretty much Natural Mending all the time in 3s unless you're playing with a Rogue or a Feral. And then Trailblazer. Trailblazer is, major is mostly a 2v2 talent. Um, so... I don't. I didn't know how this worked in Legion because it worked the same. I didn't really realize how it worked until halfway through Legion. Is that whenever you don't attack after three seconds, you gain a 30% sprint. So it's very good if you're getting kited by a healer, such as a Misweaver or a Druid, because those are the two hardest healers for hunters to hit, for anyone really to hit. So if they get away, say you get you get Bash cloned and the Druid gets across the map, this helps you get back. And a little nifty interaction with. Uh, Trailblazer is that if you use Crucible of Flame and you shoot a flame while you have the Trailblazer up, it will not get rid of the Trailblazer buff. So you'll keep the 30%. So you can fire flames when they're across the map from you and you're still trying to catch up. And you still will keep the mood speed and you'll be doing damage. So uh, I pretty much use this uh, if I'm just trying to chase a Druid or Mistweaver Monk. That's when I'll go Trailblazer. Other than that, you can use it in threes. If you're going, if you're going the same exact healers, but I like the natural mending defensive better. Next, we'll be going over Bloodseeker, uh, Steel Trap, and a Mur of Crows. Same thing as last year. Uh, I'm gonna go over Steel Trap last because it has more niche to it. So pretty much uh, the way to look at this talent here. Bloodseeker is more consistent damage. Mur of Crows has more burst. They roughly equal to the same amount of damage. Um, Bloodseeker will, uh, as the game goes on longer, and if you're ever target swapping, Bloodseeker will edge out a Murder of Crows. But uh, this this is another uh, like another preference here. Um, crows, if you just want extra burst, like you can like tr uh, Crows before you go for the stun trap, just start building up the extra damage. Um, or if you just want consistent damage over the game, um, Bloodseeker. I will say though, if you're ever going to attack a plate target, always take Bloodseeker because Crow's damage is significantly reduced onto plate targets. 
so I would never use a go if I'm ever going DK Pally Warrior, I will never take Murder Crows. You have essentially just lost an auto talent because it's just so little damage in the plate. And then the niche use of Steel Trap is if you're playing, this is mainly a 2v2 string, but this can also apply to 3s. You won't run into this problem much as 3s. Is I take Steel Trap when I would normally take tra Tracker's Net, but I think there's other useful auto talents I could get instead of Tracker's Net. So same playing against Demon Hunter, and I want Hunting Pack to run it, because I'm going to go to the healer uh, against, as against the Demon Hunter, I'm going to run his healer. And I want Hunting Pack to catch up, and then I want Diamond Ice. But I don't want to give up survival tactics because it's good as well. Then I'll just take I'll just take seal trap in the situation, and then I have that root as well. Though just be warned, steel trap is dodgeable, so they can blade dance it. Rogues can evasion it, so just be careful of that. Um, pr yeah, there's pretty much mainly two v two. In the situations you can use it in three v three, but I prefer not to. Uh, we'll go over this next talent tier, post haste, the the freedom on disengage, the sprint's just too good, binding shot, like you just, pretty much the issue is, is there's no downside to post haste, and the downside to these two talents is that you don't have post haste, this is the, this is the way I like to look at it, and post haste is just so good to use the kite, you can pair it with like a freedom if so you don't get snared on the sprint, just, just really good. Uh, so next we'll look at this tier, Mongoose Bite's pretty much the uh, go-to talent. Uh, Mongoose Spike deals about one and a half, uh, so a Raptor Strike deals one and a half times more damage than a baseline Mongoose Spike. So once you get the, uh, the, two, the, set, the second stack, like the, literally the second stack of Mongoose Spike, it deals more damage than Raptor Strike. And in most situations, you'll get the two to three stack of Mongoose Spike pretty easily. Uh, in the situations where you can't really do it, which is like double DPS twos, like as Rogue Hunter when you're trying to reset, then you could take Flanking Strike or Tip of the Spear, but... It's safe bet, always Mongoose Bite. Same thing as this tier. Safe bet, always Wild and Fire Infusion. Uh, you can't take Chakrams if you're running out of Mage or Priest. I wouldn't do it if you're going against a Destral Warlock because it is affected by armor. And with Demon Armor, they take a lot less physical damage. So Chakrams kind of loses that. But pretty much, overall, these two towns are kind of preference. I would take this if I had low amounts of haste, though. Grail Tactics, um, as I said, if you're running a healer in twos, if you're not playing with a rogue or feral in either bracket, and it always is double DPS twos, and if you're or if you're playing with a rogue or feral, uh, preference, and if you don't want to take trackers net, baseline, baseline, baseline. Next, we're gonna go over the honor talents. I'm gonna go over the trinket slot first. Uh, as I kind of alluded to uh, when I was going over the races, uh, if you're a human, I would go relentless, and as, as every other race in the game, I'd go Gaius Medallion. Just just a safe bet good because as a hunter you really need to be able to trinket to get your goes off to get your defenses off so like trinket faint death trinket exil trinket turtle very good uh and with human you already have a stun trinket so it's just it's relentless is pretty much the play so now i'm going to go over every single honor talent which ones i would use and which like situations so first i'm going to go over Roar sacrifice Roar Sacrifice is very good into Fire Mage Combustion and just Fire Mage in general, but mainly you want to tie it into their Combustion. And it is good into Fury Warrior Recklessness, but you don't really fight a lot of Fury Warriors, so that situation won't come up very often. But it's also just a nice kind of cool and have, like, uh, stop crits. Like, crit isn't that prevalent in PvP, but, like, it's kind of nice. Like, if there's no other Honor Talents to take, you could take Ross just to kind of, like, make it w go weaker. Uh, so next, I'm going to go over Hunting Pack. I like to take Hunting Pack if I'm ever playing with this Priest in threes, and I'm fighting a double melee cleave because I can pair it with Master's Call, uh, the freedom we have from our pet, and then you can also cheat to them, and then they can get away from the melee cleaves and recover faster without having to commit cooldowns or extra mana uh, than they would normally have to. Uh, the next one we're going to go over is Mending Bandage. I pretty much always take this against Assassination Rogues and into Feral Druids. You can use this in the Sub Rogues, but typically you're not going to get the Mending Bandage off to get the Nightblade off during the Ghost, so I wouldn't really recommend it. There's better Honor Talent choices you can uh, use uh, based on their comp setup. So pretty much always using against Assassination Rogues and Ferals in any bracket. Um, we're going to go over Tracker Snap, a 6 second route. Pretty much if I'm running at a healer, uh, and I'm playing against any melee, I will run Tracker's Net. Against Rets and uh, Windwalkers, you will kind of have to try to bait out Tiger's Luster Freedom. It's not the easiest thing in the world to bait them out, but if you can bait them out, then I would throw Tracker's Net. Or if a monk is, like, 
monk does a stun go on your healer and you just track him in the middle of his go. He doesn't want to have to waste that global and tiger's list, but he's going to have to. So then gives your healer an extra one and a half seconds to maybe get away or get a cool line off or just something to live. Next, we're going to go over Diamond Ice. Uh, pretty much, if I'm running out of healer in twos, I run this. Otherwise, I'll never, I'll don't take it. I wouldn't even take this PhD because if you're playing with a good DK or DK just like is paying attention, your traps really shouldn't break that often. Uh, the next one we're going to go over is High Explosive Trap. I pretty much exclusively only take this into Destro Locks in twos or threes. Because uh, I like to use it as a pseudo interrupt, so when my uh, my muzzle's down and when my uh, other DPS doesn't have a kick or we have no stops, I'll use explosive trap to knock like knock a fear or a chaos bolt. Just even if it doesn't move them more than an inch, as long as it stops the cast, that's what I'm mainly looking for out of the explosive trap. Just the distance they move is also just an extra plus. And then the last two honor talents we're gonna go over is spider's ding. I pretty much only use this in twos and against casters because. Uh, a lot of times in 3v3, the casters are usually playing with a healer that can dispel it. And you're typically, um, you don't want to usually use it on your go, you want to use it on their go. So when they're playing with a paladin, or playing with a druid during their go, spiders seem like it may stop them for a second or two, but it's not that good. But like if they're playing, if you're playing against sub rogue uh, mage disc priest, it's good then because then there's no way for them to get them off and they just have to sit the silence. And then the last honor talent. Be pretty much always take it, no matter when any situation. Survival tactics, just in, just insanely powerful. Probably, honestly, in my opinion, one of the best honor talents across the game. It's just so good. Fain Death just removes all magical effects, and then just, just is just a damage reduction, which works on so many things. Works on all frost mage damage. Works on anything other. It, the only things it doesn't work on that in the middle of the air is chaos bolt and uh, chaos bolt aim shot and greater power plus we don't fight marksman hunter so we can take aim shot of the situation and it doesn't work on g pi and it doesn't work on chaos Bull, but everything else that works it works on you can like reduce aoe damage from blade uh blade dance from blade storm all those and also another thing you can do is if you pop out of death fast enough the target never drops you like when feign death when you normally use it will drop the, uh drop your target like they, they'll lose their targeting on you but if you go up fast enough they never lose their target so what you can do is you can feign death like against a feral druid as he's about to bite and his bite will just do 99% reduced damage and he'll just be annoyed that he's essentially wasted 5 combo points. So that's pretty much it for talents. Uh, next we're going to go over Azerite traits. So pretty much the, the premier build to use is 3 latent poisons, 1 wilderness survival, and 1 premium intuition. The 6 trait doesn't really matter, I wouldn't worry about it too much. So. So we'll look at it. We'll look over it. Lane Poison, just really good to have. Well, if Survival is really good. You mainly want it for the Bomb Cool Introduction, but the extra Monk's White Damage doesn't uh, uh, hurt. And then you want Primeval for the extra extra 20 focus. Just helps you just get more damage off. Uh, I'm going to go over what Azerite is the best, for uh, depending on your profession. So if you are Engineering, uh, the best three Azerite pieces to have is the Engineering Helmet because of... The, this, the Relation Normalization Gizmo, just an extra 900 primary stat and, or f and 40k health, or an extra uh, 700 haste and 25% movement speed. And then also, the Auto Self Cauterizer. It does a 20k heal, a 30% snare, but most importantly, it also removes bleed effects. What counts as bleed effects? The Corruption Gushing Wound counts as a bleed effect. It can remove uh, deep wounds, groats, the Cut of Death weapon, uh, the uh, Getaku Cut of Death uh, weapon from King's Rest. You can remove that. You can remove Feral Druid bleeds. You can remove Guardian Druids if you're sadly fighting one. There's just so many things it works on that are extremely powerful and is good to remove. So, it's I would recommend Engineering as the your go-to profession. But if you uh, so just because of this helmet. And then the shoulders you want to use are the shoulders off Mott, the pauldrons of Ill Portent. Uh, you get latent poison, you get primeval intuition, and you also get the Azerite trait, duck and cover, uh, which you get your 20k shield every time you faint death. But the most important thing is it. Re <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. It reduces faint death cooldown to 25 seconds, which is within combination of survival tactics. It's a very good trait to have. Just. Just, the, just the, the the synergy between these two is just insanely good, and then the chess piece you'll use is off Ilkonoth, the scales of the uh, uh, scheming behemoth. 
Just you get uh, Will of Survival, you get Lane Poison, and you get Nature's Salve. Uh, Exhilaration he would heal you for an extra about 27k or so, and it reduces the cooldown by 15%. Extra 15% cooldown reduction on Exil is very, very nice. It helps It really scales well with nat uh, Natural Mending as well, since you have an additional 15 sec uh, seconds off, uh, as well as reducing cooldown by one second every time you essentially press one of your two focus using abilities. So, all in all, pretty good. Uh, if you don't have engineering, the helmet I would use is uh, is off Carapace of the Zoth. Just gives you lane poison, and then you can just go hard to darkness if you have enough corruption to proc it. Um, and then you would just probably take the resounding protection in it. And if you didn't have that, the helmet I would probably use is, um, I'd use like, a vision, uh, visage of bloody horrors is good. You can take laden poison, and then you can take the blood right or the serrated jaws in it. Uh, the other helmet, I have to remember which dungeon it's from. This one's not bad as well. You can take dire consequences or laden poison. So you can either get the uh, coif of the court spider, the visage of bloody horrors, or you can get the carapace and the zoth helmet. Those are all three really good ones if you don't have engineering helmet. But I think engineering helmet is the absolute best Azurite helmet we can get. So next, I'm going to go over our stat priority. So our stat priority as it goes is ha uh, haste, first utility, then mastery, then critical strike. Critical strike is absolutely the worst one. It's for majority classes in PvP, it's bad because critical strike is halved in PvP. So on top of it not really giving us anything extra, it's also halved, so it just makes it worse. And so the reason why I prefer haste is haste point for point is your highest damage for survival hunter. Makes makes globals faster, you get fe uh, faster focus, lets you get more mong bites off during your mong bite windows, which is humongous to get because you have shorter global cooldown. Uh, then I go versatility because I think versatility it does more damage than mastery. So mastery looks insane because with me only having 500 mastery, it's a 30% DPS increase, it's a 30% damage increase. As for with 1400 versatility, it's only 17%. But you have to look at the very key wording, focus spending abilities. So let's look at our focus spending abilities. Serpent Sting, Mongoose Bite. You know what's probably our second to third high, a second or even highest damage? Wildfire Bombs, don't cost focus. Kill Command, don't cost focus. And these do a decent amount of damage, if not probably 30-40% of her damage combined, if not 50% of her damage combined. They're very, and they just do not get affected by mastery. And we don't really care about increasing Serpent Sting damage, because the only reason why we're really pressing Serpent Sting is for lane poison. So then all you're really carrying, the only thing you're really buffing is Mongoose Bite and then Crows if you're taking it. And at that point, I just think it's better to take Versatility. It all overall buffs more, and then you also get damage, incre uh, damage reduction from it. It also, like, the mastery heal, it just doesn't scale well. I've tested this. I've gone up to like 60, 70% mastery. That heal goes to 2.1% at those percentages. It just, it doesn't, the, the heal doesn't scale well enough to make it a better defensive than versatility. So, haste, versatility, then mastery, then crit. Um, the enchants you're going to want to use on your gear is I prefer quick navigation on the weapon. Uh, you can use Force Multiplier, I just, I prefer Quick Navigation, I like getting higher haste and getting a little extra agi. And then I use the 60 haste enchants, which are called a, a Cord of Haste. It's really nice to have. Uh, and now I'm going to point out what trinkets you want to look out for, what trinkets you want to use. So, first I'm going to go over the PvP trinkets. The, these are the three PvP trinkets you want to have. You want to have a Corrupted Gladiator's Badge. Um, very good. Uh, two minute cooldown, just give you a fuck ton of main stat like just helps you burst and it has versatility on it which versatility is very good uh then you want to have a uh exignia because it's verse and then just has a primary stat proc and then you want to have a maldic which is launches uh void and uh, void energy at the target deals taking dot damage for six seconds every two seconds and it also absorbs and there's actually one last pvp trinket if i go over um battle master or as it's called emblem uh, just a good defensive uh, trinket. Increases your health for... It's going to be at, at higher item levels. is about 120k for 20 seconds. It's very strong because in coordination with Exil, it makes you it makes you have more health. So Exil does more healing. So it's just a good defensive trinket if you're going to wear a defensive trinket. 
So those are the four PvP specific trinkets. Now they're about, I want to say, five to six decent to good uh, PV trinkets. So I'm going to go over the decent ones first. Uh, Harlan's Loaded Dice. Just good. Just gives you, you don't get versatility from it, but you could just get extra uh, extra stats. Like, ma like I said, Mastery is not bad. I just think it's worse than versatility, but it's still nice to have. Just a nice proc. Get haste. Just get some nice procs. Another one to look out for is the Humming Black Dragon Scale. I like to use this if I plan on running at something with high mo like high mobility, if I like moving around a lot, because the speed gives you about 7% extra movement speed so it adds up and it's like it has good uptime it's like 50 to 60 percent uptime in arena so it's a really good trinket um another one to look out for is the vita charge titan shard gives you it just has, it has haste on it haste is our best stat and it can just proc a lot of haste it doesn't have an insanely high proc rate but when it does proc it ha you just get so much haste and you give your uh your party members haste so if you're playing with like a, a disc priest or a pally just haste is one of their better stats so it just helps them out and now we go over the best two pv trinkets and probably the best two trinkets you'll use one of them is interchangeable and that is the remote guidance device and the withering segment of Dress to Geth. You guys have probably seen this on streams everywhere. I'll show you what they look like. The Dress to Geth is the big spikes to pop out of the ground. The guidance device is just the crashing tire and people. Just two insanely good high bursting options. Um, they're not as great in the plate, but they're still like they're still good, but they're not as good in the plate. Um, in some situations, I'll take off the remote guidance device. Like if I'm running at a healer, or like something at, like if I run, if I'm pretty much running at a healer in twos or even in threes, then I'll probably throw on the um, I'll throw on the dragon scale just to get the extra movement speed or even a dice for extra damage. But these two are just really good. Like here's the tire, just bam, the 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 AOE crit and the thing just just look how much damage it did. Like that would be half. That would be like a little bit less. That'd probably be like a 70k hit. 150k damage just like that just insane um uh one trinket i'll mention as well i kind of didn't think about is spite uh, i would only use this trinket if all three people are using it because the the rate at which the corruption sack uh scales so if you have three spites on somebody it's going uh three extra corruption per second so you can get them to high corruptions faster but i would only use it if you have three i would never use it if you only have one and two and that's uh yeah, those are it for trinkets. Uh, next, I'm actually going to go over essences. I forgot to mention at the beginning, but I'm going to go over the essences. So this is my basic 3v3 setup for essences. I go Reaping uh, Breath of Dying uh, Major, which is the Reaping Flame, because it's pretty much... In, you use it at the beginning of your go, or when you're starting to go, you get a you get it on 15 second cooldown, and say you like, you bash trap, and that's 13 seconds. Two seconds after the trap, if they're... If you have them execute range, you can just reaping flame them again and either get a kill or get the cooldown reduction. Also, you can cheese this with the uh, mind tendril, the tendril corruption that people are using, the little tendies, the chicken tendies people call it. You can use this to kill a t uh, tendril, and then you'll get the increased damage from it, and then you can just fire it off, just deal 100k damage. It's very useful. Then I like the Crucible of Flame, rank 4. Uh, it's the whatever rank pretty much, but just an extra little dot stacks up three times. Just just a decent hitting dot. Then I use the condensed life force. Just a little shard that does just extra damage and increases your damage. We don't really care about the DPS increase. It's nice, but we mainly just do it because it hits kind of hard. And then ripple in space rank three, which can I would only use this as a rank three, and it can be swapped out for other ones. Uh, the main reason why I like it is that the agi time has it's pretty much. Every time the Agi proc can proc, it usually procs as a hunter. And then the 5% movement speed is really nice, especially if you're using a pathfinding pet. Because then you have the 8% movement speed. And it goes up to 113. And then if you're using the, the Black Dragon scale for an extra 7%, you're 120. Then you're playing Trailblazer, 150. Just if you move, you're just a speedy little boy and you're moving around. Uh, this one is interchangeable, though, with Conflict and Strive for, like, Essence of the Focusing Iris. These two, like, you can, if you have low amounts of hates, I would use Iris. But if you have good haste like I do, 27%. I have lowish haste, like I would like more, but I would use Conflict and Strife if I wasn't using Ripple in space. So those are the uh, 2v2, uh, the 3v3 essences. Now in 2v2, I'll swap it up a little bit and I will go 
uh, Flame Major and Breath of the Dying minor because in what I find in um, twos as a hunter, I typically don't have people at above 80% health a lot of the time. I'm usually doing enough rot damage that um, I won't get much value out of reducing the cooldown of Breath of the Dying, so I prefer Flame more because it's just more consistent. Though, if I am playing against, and it's only this comp specifically I will play it against, is Destralock, uh H Priest, a Holy Priest, because my main goal is to just sit there and do nothing, and just kind of like whittle them down behind a pillar until it's deep enough dampening that I can win. So I'd like to just take Reaping Flame, because I'll, they'll usually always be above 80% health uh, until the dampening part, so it's just extra damage to make the Priest use more mana. That's pretty much it. Because that's just my strat. So these are those are your two v two essences. So I'm just gonna swap back to threes. All right. Now I'm gonna go over the basic rotation, the things to look out for, uh, how to min max your damage more. So to start off with, the major thing we want to do is we want to keep Serpent Sting on the target as much as we can because we are running the Azrite trait of Laden Poison. Uh, so just get the lane poison stacked up, it's really nice. I like to then keep a bomb on cooldown because bombs just keys and damage and you never want to be sitting on two bombs for long. Um, then you can just kill command when you're below about 70 focus or so and you're not really trying to spam Mongo Spites and then just weave in Mongo Spites. Just, just Mongo Bite, just Mongo Spite and weave in kill commands and just, yeah, as you can see here, just kind of just like gain damage off, like I need some focus, I'm gonna double kill command, then I can spam Mong Spites, and then I'm gonna bomb, and in some situations you can double bomb, if you're trying to burst you can double bomb, and then always making sure if you're running Reap and Flame to get the, as much of cooldown reset as you can when they're above 80% or below 20%, it's always good to do, and then when you're bursting weave in your two trinkets, or if you're trying to do hard weave in a crows before a trap, you know, it's, it's, pre it's pretty basic, it looks like, so it's a basic rotation, but from a bad hunter to a good hunter, the damage difference is extremely noticeable because of how well they're min-maxing their lane poison. Like, not, not getting, not always popping lane poison at high stacks, but making sure every Mongo Spite has lane poison on it. Making sure they're keeping their bombs on cooldown. Making sure they're not focus starving themselves randomly. It's just how well they min-max their actual damage. So, um... That's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go over uh, macros I think they're important to have. So the first macro I'm going to go over is my Freezing Trap. And this will also go over for Steel Trap and uh, Tar Trap. It's my At Cursor macro. So what this does is it just, instead of getting the reticle, I'll show you what it looks like. Instead of getting this reticle right here, it will just instead instantly throw the trap to wherever your mouse is. It's very useful. It's not like super necessary, but... I find that it's faster to deal with. Um, you can do it without the cursor macro. I, the main reason why I swapped over the cursor macro because in, was because in Legion there was an issue with reticles that it, you you had to sometimes double the triple click to get them down. So I swapped the cursor macro because it made it easier to throw the traps because of it. And I also do that with flare as well. I do that with pretty much anything with the reticle at this point anymore because of how messed up uh, reticles were in Legion. But when BFA and reticles aren't as bad, they really, uh, they fix the bug with reticles, so you don't have to use it. I find it very useful. Uh, any, uh, useful macro, I like this macro a lot. Uh, it's so you don't have to have, um, multiple mending manage macros in your bar. So pretty much what this does is if, uh, it's mouse over exists, so if you're mousing over something, so say I'm mousing over my pet, it's frame or the actual person, it'll mending manage themselves. And if I'm not mousing over anybody, it'll mending manage myself. So... It's a nice little macro to have. I do all-in-one macros. Let me find them. So I do an all-in-one spider sting viper sting macro for focus and for this. And my little trick is in this macro, I have viper sting showing first. And in this macro, I have spider sting. So this one will always show the viper sting cooldown. And this one will always show spider sting cooldown. Because I couldn't figure out how to do it otherwise. It won't work anymore because they've changed uh, how honor towns look. I, you see I don't have scorpion sting in there. Because you're never going to take Scorpus Sting. It's just extremely useless. So I, I didn't bother like putting it in there. But if you want to, you can put Scorpus Sting in there. And then other than that... <coughs> um, this is a good coordinated assault macro. Um, my friend Bikmix, uh showed me this one. So I like this because... Um, so coordinated assault won't take you out of camouflage. If you don't use any racials or trinkets. So I put no stealth here. So when I'm in... Uh, if I want to coordinate assault 
when I'm in camo but not come out of it, this will work. And then I specifically macro medallion and badge um, like out of it because if I'm using the dress to guest trinket, it will... If I pop Corian Assault and it's in my 13 or 14 slot and I have it in this macro, it'll just randomly dress to guess trinket. Which sometimes I'm not in range when I'm popping Corian Assault because Hunter has decent amount of range damage and we have Eagle. So I don't want to just randomly dress to get the air. I don't want to just like go, oh say I'm like oh I'm popping this and I just I don't want to do that because now I just didn't hit the tar I just didn't hit my target and I've just essentially wasted my dress to guess trinket. Um, those are the most important macros. There's cool macros like this one. Which is kind of like an all in one. So it puts Binding Shot and Flanking Strike into the same macro. So you typically aren't going to take both. It, just, like, it helps save space. It's the same, like what this does. And then when I'm not either one, it just shows Serpent Sting. I, you can make it show any ability. I just have it showing Serpent Sting. It's just like a nice space saver macro. I mean, other than that, there's no other super... Like, if, if people ask me all the time about my Intim macro, there's nothing special to it. It's just focus and Tim. That's pretty much it. There's no other super special macros. This one's also kind of nice to have because um, you can use this to have your pet stop drinks easier. So you don't have to like click on them. So instead of doing this click and then hitting my pet attack, I can just go put this guy on focus and just go go stop the drink. Okay, there we go. He got stuck a little bit. He's a little slow. Give him a break. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Those are all the useful macros. And I'm going to go over the best 2v2 and the best 3v3 comps. So the best 2 comp... So I'm going to go over double DPS and healer DPS. Because some people like playing double DPS. Some people like healer DPS. Some people play both. So I'm going to go over double DPS first. I think the best double DPS comp for Hunter is Rogue Hunter. Uh, you can just do... It's sub rogue speci especially. I don't think it's that great with Assass. I think it's good with sub. Because sub can set up goes. It can cheap. Like hitting the healer and then it's triple stun. And then Hunter can play like burst trinkets. Like dress to guess and the bike. And can run flame. And you can just do good burst and play crows. And then the second best one is Feral Hunter, because you kind of can just run around and uh, slowly PV, like attack things. And the Feral also has good off healing. So I think it's Rogue Hunter, then Feral Hunter. Rock Hunter can kind of work. It's not insane, but um, Feral Hunter and Rogue Hunter are definitely your top two. And then for Healer DPS, um, I think Restitute Hunter is the best one. It's probably one of the best twos comps in the game, if not the best twos comp. In my personal opinion, I think it's the second best twos comp in the game. I think the only thing that beats it is Windwalkers. Um, you can't lose to other stuff, but like, I think Windwalkers is the only matchup where I think Windwalkers should win. And then your next best comp is uh, Misweaver Hunter, then it's Pally Hunter, then it's Disc Hunter. And then it's Shaman Hunter. It's pretty much the strength of healers is what it goes down to. Is I it, it, Druid, I think is the best of two, so Druid, then Mistweaver, then Pally, then Disc. And then your best uh, 3v3 comps, there's pretty much only two, and one has a slight variation. So there's Disc Jungle, which is Feral, Hunt Feral Hunter, Disc Priest. Then there's Pally Jungle, which is just Feral Hunter Paladin. And then there's Thug Cleave, which is Sub Rogue Hunter uh, Disc. They're all uh, they're all about the same. They have different, they have varying matchups. Like H Pal Jungle is better into melee cleaves than this jungle is, but this jungle is by far better into mages because the priest can uh, avoid mage CC better than a paladin can because the paladin can only really sack and then run away. As where priest has death, MC, fear can be more disruptive to the mage and doesn't need as much babysitting. And then priest also just like can have more preemptive cooldown. Pally cooldowns are very strong, so if your paladin's good at rotating, it's not as bad, but priest cooldowns are just like. They're just, they're, uh, pretty good as well. And then, like, Thug Cleave is, um... Thug, like, to me, Thug Cleave, like, there isn't an exactly awful matchup for Thug Cleave. Like, Death Throw is pretty annoying, but there's no, like, impossible matchup. Like, you could always pull a win out of anything because of just, it's a setup comp and you can just have a really good setup and win. Uh, so yeah, I, I think they're pretty much all about the same. I wouldn't put any of them at differing, like... One above the other. I think they all just have their different strengths and weaknesses that make them good. Like sub, so like Thug Cleave, like you need to play typically better because you're a go, you're a go oriented comp, and it's not like you can just PV and randomly win. So, and I think Thug Cleave is harder to play because I think sub, it's not like a harder rogue spec. I think the rotation is just so much more complicated to get the most optimal use out of it. So I think sub like Thug Cleave is slightly harder than jungle. But, like, they're all relatively easy. It's pretty straightforward what you do. You just got to figure out who you kill in what matchups, and that's it. 
Uh, and the last part of this video, I just want to go over a little uh, few uh, tips and tricks, things that you may not know that you can do in Arena. Uh, like I was saying earlier with the Reaping Flame, uh, if you kill like a low health pet or something, you can get the damage increase. But there's also an interesting interaction that I've noticed with Reaping Flame is that, so it says in the tooltip that you have to get the kill, uh, that's how you get the damage increase. But if you use Reaping Flame and they get below 20% health, but it doesn't kill it, but within a global cooldown or two, it dies, it will fully reset the Reaping Flame and give you the damage increase. So what you can do, say a DK pops a bomb and you're playing jungle, you and your Feral, if you really want to, if you're both playing Reaping Flame, can get that a bomb to like 30% health, and then one Reaping Flames it, and then you, and then the other Reaping Flames right after. So one will get the immediate cooldown reset because. They didn't get the kill, but it died within a second, and then the other will just get the five second cooldown one. So then you can both cheese your reaping. So that's like something you can uh, partner up. That that's something that's gonna take a lot, of, a little bit more coordination with your partner to kind of go over. And then, so that's like a good thing to do with it. Um, another thing to do if you see a bike, if you're fighting against a a bike team, if you see the bike and you're not a sun, I would feign death if you're running trial tactics because that will reduce the damage of the bike because it has the travel time. Another thing to do, and I saw a couple complaints about this, is um, I don't think it's really known, but you can flare the be breach trinket because breach essentially counts as like a vanish. Uh, it's a good way, or like mass invis. It's a way to think about it. It like da like it's like a vanish, but so what you can do is when you see someone cast this trinket so say this tar trap is the breach as soon as you see it go down you just play a flare right in the middle of it and no matter where they take it they'll be instantly flared out so you essentially negate the breach trinket uh any other like there's no uh other really useful tips i can think of right off the top of my head if you guys have any questions whatsoever uh Please go down below, uh, just ask me anything in the comments, ask me on Twitter, ask me when I'm streaming. If you see me in game, you can ask me there, I'll be more than happy to answer questions. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this guide. I'm sorry it took out a little bit while, I wanted to get more gear um, and all that. And actually, just remembered, almost forgot about corruptions, which you can probably already know what the best corruptions are. But your best corruptions are infinite stars if you have tier 3. Then, um, Gushing Wound is also very good. I'm currently using Void Ritual. It's not the worst thing in the world. I would prefer a Void Ritual or Gushing... Uh, not Void Ritual. I prefer an Infinite Stars or uh, Gushing Wounds. Those aren't bad. Um, Aquaming Void isn't the worst thing in the world. It's not like... It's it's decent damage, but... Because they didn't really get fit to my nerf, so it's still good. Uh, I'm just not using it right now, because I don't get... I lose versatility if I don't use it, and I currently just want some more versatility. Uh, the corruption is like the haste, getting extra haste or getting extra versatility from your stats is good. The versatility and the haste proc are good. Um, you pretty much want to avoid like the avoidance one, the leech one. Um, Twilight Dev isn't that great because Twilight Dev can break CC. Uh, as for Echoing Void, one doesn't break CC, so Echoing Void is better than Twilight Dev. Um, Two percent crit damage. I have it right here. Just absolutely worthless when everywhere in a million years. Uh, the tendrils aren't bad. The only reason why I wouldn't run tendrils is if you're fighting people who know how to abuse the reaping flame, it becomes more of a liability than it becomes a, uh, a DPS increase. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions, like, again, please ask me, Twitter, Twitch, down, uh, down in the comments on YouTube, in-game, just any way you can contact me, I'll be more than happy to answer to the best of my abilities. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, I hope you guys like it, uh, subscribe if you do and like this video, I'll be making more content like this soon in the future. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.